You guys gave me so much wood, it's absurd. Look at this. Look at this. The dude at the P.O. box was literally making fun of me. Hey everyone, it's Zally here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to finish that map of the United States that I started a couple of videos ago. So if you're new around here, basically when I moved from Ohio to California, I stopped in every state along the way and got a piece of wood that was grown and milled in that state. It was only 12 states, but you guys sent me the rest of the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii. I opened a few of the ones that came early off camera and I quickly realized that I should do it on camera because some of them come with incredibly good stories. And I also, that was the moment I realized I should probably make a part two video where I finish the map. So probably that's what this is. You probably read the title. I don't really have a plan, so you know more about this than I do right now. I will say though, I'm incredibly humbled that people took the time out of their day and they took the money and the effort to ship me wood from their state to add to my project and I don't know it's a hard feeling to describe but thank you let's open wood I guess all right first up we have this one is from Oregon this is the only person by the way who just like wrapped up some wood and mailed it and I want to point out that I have before just written addresses on a piece of wood and mailed it and they all went through including one to Pat Lab in Canada. Um, the only one that didn't go through was Laura Camp in Germany because Germany Customs was like, nah, we don't, we don't do this. Zyla, here's a piece of Oregon maple. Love the channel. Keep up the great work. The content and content. Got it. Nice. Oregon maple. This is beautiful. Very curly. This one is from Missouri and it's black walnut. So fun fact, there is a PBS show called Make 48 and Jimmy DiResta and I co-hosted season four of it. We were gonna co-host season five, but unfortunately COVID canceled it. Um, but we got to do part of it at a really cool community wood shop in Kansas City called Maker Village Kansas City. And they sent me some black walnut from their shop that was grown in Missouri. Oh, here's another one from a friend. This is from my friend Becky Stern, who has a YouTube channel as well. Um, and, oh, she sent me stickers. Becky Stern stickers. And this is a piece of sugar maple from her family's farm in Connecticut. Thank you, Becky. Okay, this is one of the ones from Michigan. So Damon from Michigan sent this one to me. Michigan, I will say, uh, I can at least use two pieces because it's got like two distinct sections. I don't know why we haven't given the Upper Peninsula to Canada yet, but you know, right now it's still Michigan. Hi, Zyla. Recently I went to a nice older lady's, Pam, home to pick up a load of red oak that she wanted to sell. In her dining room, there were two small child-sized chairs. She explained that a few years ago, a giant oak tree had stood in the front yard until it fell onto the house. Her husband paid a company to remove the tree and have it milled into boards. His plan was to make something for his future grandchildren. Pam explained their daughter had recently had her first child, but just prior to this, her husband had passed away before being able to make anything for his grandchildren. Pam had some of the wood made into the two chairs before selling the rest of the wood so she would have something to pass on from grandpa. The section of wood I'm sending you is from that wood I got from Pam that day. And this is why I'm opening all these on camera. It's like so humbling that people trust me with wood that has stories like this. So thank you, Damon and Pam. Thank you, Pam. You don't know it yet, but this is beautiful. All right, this is from Keith in North Newton, Kansas. Man, is it confusing that Kansas City is Missouri. Like, who thought that was a good idea? Dear Miss Foxland, enclosed, please find three slices of Osage orange wood sent in hopes that one of them can represent Kansas on your woods of the United States map. Osage Orange, a member of the Mulberry family, is not recorded as being indigenous to Kansas. It is, however, the species that any farmer would identify as best characterizing Kansas, as it's the primary tree planted in the half-mile and mile windbreaks that are ubiquitous in this part of the state, to the extent that it's referred to locally as hedgewood, or simply hedge. Each year, they litter the ground with softball-sized, bright green fruit textured like underripe mulberries, which are utterly useless, but fun to throw if you don't mind the inevitable sticky results. 
The enclosed slices are from a small slab I've had for many years. Fresh cuts in Osage orange wood range from vivid green to actual orange. The surface cures to honey brown with exposure to oxygen and UV, as you can see on the one face and on the end grain. I apologize for the poor resawing job to get pieces easy to mail. It's a hard wood and my bandsaw blade is not new. Wow, you wrote the history bit for me. This one is from Cumberland, Maryland. Oh my gosh! They sent me a little, a little cutting board, charcuterie board thing. Thank you. And wait, that's so cool. Okay, this is a cedar strip kayak by Mike Calhoun, who's the one who sent me this, and it's featuring his work. So they've sent walnut from Maryland, red oak from Pennsylvania, and West Virginia pine. Now for this one, I tapped it and I sniffed it and I looked at it and I decided it definitely wasn't pine, but I wasn't sure what it was, so I talked to some friends and our best guess is apple. This piece right here, it was the one that made me realize I needed to open all these on camera. My name is Sean Johnson and this is a piece of black walnut from Alabama. It was harvested before I was born by my dad and his friend Raymond in 1974 or 1975. My mom wasn't 100% sure. It was cut down on Raymond's land just outside of Selma, Alabama. This piece was made into the mantelpiece for the fireplace in the house that I grew up in. My dad died in 1985 and my mom moved out of that house in 1999. She took it to her new house, but it didn't fit the fireplace in that house, so I received it in 2001 when I bought my first house in Georgia. Sadly, it didn't fit the fireplace in my house either. It sat in the closet until 2008 when I shipped it off to Oklahoma to be built into the neck of a banjo. The remainder was sent back and the remaining 55 by 10 slab has been quietly awaiting its next adventure. I hope this can be incorporated into your 50 state build. It's not the state tree, but I think it has a good story to go along with it. 73, Sean. 73 is a sign off in ham radio, by the way. This piece of wood has been in, in Sean's family for 50 years. Okay, this is absolutely hysterical. Did you know you can, you can just send a box like this? <laughs> it's just like an entire package of stamps. Zyla, here some black walnut and oak scraps that were sawmilled in Iowa. Just stuff I rescued from a barn. No need to send anything in return. Just something from one maker to another. Brett. Me and Spalding Signs both on Facebook. Cool. Thanks, Brett. I'm amused because you guys did see the size of the map and you're sending me this, which is awesome. Now I have wood for future projects. I'm just, you know, amused. This one is from M. Smith in Berkeley, Michigan. Hello, Zyla. Nice idea for the wooden puzzle slash map. Enclosed, you will find some apple wood and a chunk of plum wood too, for good luck, from in and around my neighborhood here in Michigan. I'm a wood turner and always on the lookout for trees, fruit trees in particular being cut down. I find the grain and fruit trees most appealing. Also enclosed is a wooden apple wood spoon that I made. Thank you, Marty Smith. Aw, thank you, Marty. This one is from Sam Higgins in Marinette, Wisconsin. Whoa, wait, I'm gonna read this letter before I even open it. Hi, Zyla, greetings from Wisconsin. The native species of wood I picked is black locust. Hopefully you can find a use for it. It might be too dry. I don't know anything about woodworking, but I love your channel. I sent some desert ironwood seeds and some souvenirs. If you get a chance, take a trip out to the Sonoran Desert. It is beautiful. Keep doing what you do. Your biggest Wisconsin fan, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm supposed to be excited about the wood, but I'm really excited about the maple syrup. Oh, I haven't had real maple syrup in so long. Oh my God, what a care package. It just keeps going. To look up what... That's funny that this note says it might be too dry because this is, <laughs> it hasn't been dried at all. Thank you so much, Sam. And thank you for the really thoughtful gifts as well. It really, ah, it makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. Wait, and before all you Alaskans and Hawaiians start yelling at me, I did get and make Alaskan Hawaii, but the problem is you guys sent it to me before I decided to make this video, so I didn't get the unboxing, but I still made the states. <laughs> so I got some more mail and I'm gonna open it. Oh, this one is from Richford, Vermont. Hi, Sally, here's some wood from Vermont that you can add to your map. It's butternut wood. The things you can do on your channel are really cool and creative. I especially like the first canoe video. Anyway, I hope this helps on your map, Silas. Thank you, Silas. I love butternut, actually. 
For those of you who don't know, butternut is considered like the white walnut. This one is from Montana. Helena, Montana. Hello, Xylofoxlin. My name is Devin. I have enclosed some local wood for your state map. Ambrose maple. This piece comes from a maple that was harvested during another fire prevention job. Hope you can enjoy and use some of these, Devin. Awesome. All right, here's a box from New York. Hi, Zyla. I saw your posts about your map of wood and your Instagram story about the American chestnut, and I wanted to send you something similar. These are pieces of white ash from New York, more specifically Western New York between Niagara Falls and Buffalo. Hmm, look at that ash. The wood comes from a tree that had fell on the property some time before we moved here about five years ago. After pulling it out and cutting it up, it was super clear from the track marks it had been killed by the emerald ash borer that has been wiping out ash around here. Fortunately, most of the wood from this tree was super clear of defects and track marks and completely usable. These are some of the last pieces I got from that tree, and I know you'll put them to good use. Even if, even though it has been air dried for years, I still, thank you, thank you. Even though it has been air dried for years, I still threw it through a bake and dehydrate cycle just in case. This is awesome because I was actually really scared about like being responsible for transmitting any invasive species. Ugh, gotta love some nice ash. Here's a box from Nebraska. Nebraska. Ooh, this person has a wax seal of their very own. That's cool. Nebraska. Oh. All right, no note. The note was actually an Instagram message and it was Elm. Air Rocket Works. My next video is a rocket video. I'm very confused if this is like something I ordered. Interesting, it's wet. Hi Zyla, here's a piece of New Hampshire paper birch cut down last fall, the official state tree of New Hampshire. It was a small tree and was outside, so it's still a bit wet. I resawed it and then milled it flat and parallel on my bridge port. Wow, that is extra, I love it. It was the easiest and safest way for a small piece like this. Hopefully it will work for what you need to do. By the scale of the map, I'm guessing New Hampshire will only be an inch or so in height. Very, very cool. This one is coming from Everett, Washington. Hi Zyla, this is a piece of a clear vertical grain Douglas fir from Washington. If there's a tree that epitomizes western Washington, this is it. It grows everywhere and makes good lumber for construction and other things. It is not a true fir, but it is in its own genus with a few relatives. It is, wow, very beautiful and clear grained. Look at this, like perfect grain. It looks like it's printed. Last one for today. Tidewater Red Cypress from Gulf Coast, Florida, which is between Tampa and Panama City. Cool. No name on who it's from and no return address. So I guess I can't send you something back. I'm sorry. Okay, just remember that I have one more. Okay, missed the unboxing because I forgot that I had copyrighted music playing in the background. So here is take two. This is a piece of curly maple. My friends at Narwhal Labs sent it to me and Narwhal Labs is Total Boat's makerspace in Rhode Island. So can we talk about how Total Boat, I was complaining on Instagram that Rhode Island is too small for my magnets. So they ordered me McMaster Boat, like, Teeny tiny microscopic magnets. Look at them, they're so cute. Ah, oh God, it's so little, why is it so little? Oh, look at that. Look at that, custom teeny tiny magnet. I forgot to get footage while I was there, but I did pick up this piece of exotic desert ironwood from a hardwood dealer here in Los Angeles. This one is from North Carolina. Jesus. All these DIY boxes are very uh, very hard to open. What have we here? Hickory, I don't think I have hickory left. Enclosed is a piece of North Carolina hickory left over from one of my projects. I hope you can use it on your USA map project. Good luck in your project. Awesome, 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 awesome. And now we're doing South Carolina. I like it when things line up like that. I will say these flat rate boxes are really great for mailing wood around because like you don't get, oh boy. Like you don't get, oh boy. This is an open outside project. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. There's what seems to be a peppermill in here. Ooh, that's pretty. Here 
is all of the pecan from South Carolina. What's very exciting is these are Rison for me. This one is from Virginia. Eastern red cedar, hey! I, Eastern Red Cedar is beautiful. Zyla, here is some Eastern Red Cedar that came from my grandfather's farm. He cut and milled it over 60 years ago. I would be greatly honored if you'd use it in your map to represent the state of Virginia. I've been a maker slash crafter for over 30 years. I admire all that you have done to show that women deserve a place in the maker community. I hope my daughter grows up to be like you. Sincerely, Jay. Aww. Of course I'll use your cedar in my map. I just picked up another North Carolina from the post office. Hope everything is going great out west. The girls and I wanted to send a few pieces to you. The large one is heart poplar from our mantle, all raised, harvested, and cut here in North Carolina, the McKinters. Aww. I want to know how old the girls are. Okay, let's open a few more packages. This one is actually from my friend Stu at Yellow Mug Inc. Ooh, the shiny sticker as well as the matte sticker. Oh, this is gorgeous. That actually, that end grain is gorgeous. This one is from Mississippi. Dear Zella, the Pascagoula River is the last virgin river in the continental United States and is an important location for both ecotourism and ecological studies by NOAA and other organizations. Turtles are an important indicator. Pascagoula itself has been home to the shipbuilding industry since 1772 with cypress logs floated down the river to supply the shipyard. Today, these sunken cypress logs are important to the ecosystem and it's illegal to dredge or dive for them. Legally harvested logs must be on the bank and are typically found after large storms. Please find some enclosed legally harvested sinker cypress from the Pascagoula River in Mississippi. That's awesome. This one is from Indiana. This person has their own tape, that's pretty cool. All right, I picked up a box today from Louisiana. So this is Cypress from Louisiana. Caves Sawdust Eporium, where flying objects are likely and trespassers may be eaten. This one is from Minnesota. Oh my gosh. It's gift wrapped. That's the cutest. This one's best packaging for sure. It's so cute. Let's read the card. Hi, I'm a maker and architectural designer in Minnesota with a lumber hoarding habit. Relatable. In this box, you will find one weathered red cedar board from the first ever house construction project I worked on in the Twin Cities. The second is a Douglas fir board from some high school bleachers in Eastern North Dakota. <gasps> North Dakota, oh my gosh. You guys have no idea, North Dakota is the state I have gotten no bites from. Like not a single person has even messaged me saying they live in North Dakota. I can confirm they have both been in use for over a hundred years a piece in their prospective state. That's awesome and so exciting. The box is from Florida. I hope it's another state because I already have Florida like done. Holy moly. This is the most organized of any of the woods I have received. They all have Latin names. There's so much wood in here. The other sample from Georgia is longleaf pine from a beam out of a barn built in the late 1800s on my grandfather's farm. The barn collapsed in 2019 and we have been slowly working to take it down and salvaging as much usable wood as possible. That particular piece of wood is at least 130 years old. You won't find any lumber like that on the East Coast these days. Andy Reid. Hi, my name's Tori and here's the story of this Japanese flowering cherry. I work at a theater in New Jersey. For about 20 years, a large row of Japanese flowering cherry trees formed the barrier between the side of the scene shop and the parking lot. One day we were working in the shop with the roll door open. It happened to be a nice day out and we wanted some fresh air when we heard chainsaws. As our painter was sobbing about all of the trees being chopped down, her boyfriend, who was the TD at the time, ran out and dragged one of the tree trunks in the shop. I suppose he was trying to make her feel better by saving part of it for her. That trunk then sat in the shop for about a year before I took it home. I took a chunk of it and turned it into a bowl for her so that she'd have something out of it useful to remember by. The rest of the trunk has sat in my basement since. Hope it all works out, Tori. <gasps> South Dakota. This is green ash from a tree that blew down in 2017. I hope you can get a South Dakota plank from it. My neighbor Steve, who's been letting me resaw everything on his bandsaw, is actually out of town right now. Um, and this video is due tomorrow, so I'm gonna pull some shenanigans that none of you guys should ever, ever do. Like, don't do this. It's from my dad's farm in Lyman Co, 
South Dakota. Love your projects, Wyatt. This one is from Laura Fulton. Actually, I know what state this is from because I know Laura. These are Jersey Red Oaks from New Jersey. Welcome to Maine. I saw your emergency request for Maine Woods, so I took a day trip up from Boston. Wasn't sure of what you already had, so I included birch, red oak, and northern white pine. Hope they help finish the map. Shipped from Wells, Maine. Oh my god, Cass! You drove to Maine and then you shipped this day up from Maine. Amazing! Okay, and this one is from my friend Scott and it's Redwood to replace California. So, I'll just resaw that. And I think it's reclaimed urban lumber, which I really love. I love reclaimed wood. Uh, and one of my favorite things about now living in California is that at the end of a very long work day in the shop, I can sit outside and enjoy a drink with some friends. Which is perfect because this video is brought to you by House. House makes aperitifs from all natural ingredients in a wide variety of flavors. So there's genuinely something for everyone. I'm a whiskey lover, so my favorite drink is to take a splash of whiskey and mix that with some spiced cherry. Ellen, do you want one too? Yes, please. And that's House's take on the Manhattan. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Mm. That's a good way to end the day. And one of the biggest perks is now that we're not in college anymore, the goal isn't really to just get drunk. It's to socially drink with our friends. But some of us are cursed with Asian genes, which means that we can't actually drink all that much alcohol. This is perfect because it's less alcoholic, and so you don't wake up with a hangover, nor do you embarrass yourself. Not that I ever would. Here is another Asian person enjoy enjoying some house. How did I get roped into this integration? By showing up and offering to help. <laughs> Fair enough. To try house today, use my code XYLOFOXLIN for 15% off and make sure you click the link in the description box. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Here's a little sneak peek of my next project. So if you like rockets, you definitely need to uh, subscribe Roni. So yeah, what you waiting for? Let's do it. See you later.